we can self-host Next.js on a VPS. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you very quickly in this video. You'll see it's much easier than you think. So let's say we have a Next.js app, very simple homepage, right? So here I just have a very simple homepage, but we also have a cool page here, which is using some of these modern features. So we have on the cool page here, we have this hello component. If I open that one up, you can see it's a client component and we have that message here, hello from client component, but it's also getting a message from from a route handler doing this to show you that those features will work on a VPS as well. We're just making a request to a route handler that is here. Okay. And also I can click on this and it will give me a message from a server action. So you don't have to understand this, but basically I'm calling a server action here. So here we're getting that message. This is a server action and this is being displayed on the page. So really the main features of a modern app router Next.js app. Let's host this on a VPS. Now very quickly, what is a VPS? What is a server? A server is essentially just a box of electronics. And these are typically in a so-called data center. And there are many data centers in the world. But you can imagine like a rectangular shape here that's going to be a server. We're going to put our Next.js app on a server like that. Now we're not going to buy a server ourselves. We're going to rent one. And we're not going to rent a complete server for ourselves a dedicated server instead we're going to do it a bit cheaper we're going to rent a we're going to use a vps so basically we will get access to a server and it will feel like we actually own the server ourselves but that's just virtualized so there may be other people using it but it will feel like we are actually using a dedicated one we can set up our own operating system and things like that i'll keep it pretty basic though so we need to get a vps from somewhere and there are companies that offer that. In this video, I'm going to use Hostinger. I'll show you how to set it up in a second. They are today's sponsor. All right, so how do we get this Next.js application on a VPS? How do we do that? So in the Next.js documentation, they actually give you a couple of examples. Now I found with Docker, it's going to be the easiest way on a VPS. You can also use a static export, basically just a bunch of HTML, CSS, JavaScript files, but you may lose some features that Next.js offers. So we're going to go with this option. I have installed Docker Desktop. It's a very easy install, so if you want to use that go ahead and do that this is what you're going to get docker desktop and the way docker works is you create a blueprint that's called an image and then we're going to instantiate actually run an instance of that that's called a container that's going to run on the vps okay but first we need to create that blueprint that will contain all of the dependencies everything that you need to run our next.js app and they show you actually here how to do that so here they have an example of a docker file right so this is what we use to create that docker image that blueprint so I'm going to create a new Docker file here like this and just paste everything that they give as an example. If you're familiar with Docker, there are certain ways to customize this, of course. There's also a Docker ignore file. They show you that as well. I'm just going to paste that here as well. We don't want everything to be part of that Docker image. Some things should be ignored, just like with gitignore. And the next thing we want to do is we want to go to our next config and we want to specify the output to be stand alone that's going to save a lot in size as well so we add this and then previously what they recommended was to install the sharp package if you're using the next.js image component however since next.js 15 this is not necessary anymore so you don't have to do this anymore to help optimize the images we are ready to go now we need to create a docker image out of this so i just killed my dev server and what i can do here is say docker build now before you press enter we're going to say some other things as well. But basically from this Docker file right in the current directory, a Docker image, basically a blueprint that will have everything that's necessary to run our Next.js app. Now that image that we're going to get, we're going to pull that onto our VPS. I'll show you the VPS in a second, but we don't want to push it directly to the VPS, to that server. So instead, I'm first going to push it to a container registry is the fancy word. There's Docker Hub, but there is also one here on GitHub. This is also what you use if you are publishing an NPM package, for example. So I want to give this a particular name or tag. So I'm going to say uh, dash T and then it's abbreviated GitHub container registry .io. My account name on GitHub is ByteGrad. And then a name, I can call it Next.js self host example. And I will give it a tag of colon latest. All right, so this will create a Docker image, but I am on Mac and it's going to be in that RAM chip, but the VPS will have, will be running Ubuntu Linux and it has an AMD 64 chip. So I want to specify that this is going to be the end result here should be that it's going to run server. So I'm going to build that for the Linux server. All right. So then I'm going to press enter and it should build an image for me. It may take a little bit because it's going to pull everything together so that you can run your Next.js app or anywhere where you can also run a Docker container. So it's very portable. All right. So after a couple minutes, it's finished. Now, if you go to Docker desktop, you can see I have an image, basically one big package of everything that my app needs to run. 
So now I just need to make sure I'm going to push this to the GitHub registry and then onto the VPS. To get it onto the container registry, we need to have a so-called access token on GitHub. Don't worry, it's pretty easy. Here under settings, we can go to developer settings and then here there is access token. So they have a new one, but I'm gonna go with classic here and I'm gonna create a new one. So here it's gonna be a classic new token. All right, so I'm just gonna say, this is for a YouTube tutorial and I just wanna, all right, so here we can decide what we should have access to. So it's about the packages here. So I wanna have access to those, to the registry, that, so. That's called packages. And then at the bottom, I'm gonna generate the token. All right, it will give you a token. Make sure you don't show it to other people. I will just quickly put it somewhere. So now I wanna push that image onto that container registry. Now I need to log in. So we need to get access to that. So we're gonna say Docker login and which container registry was this one. It's gonna ask you for the username. That's just my GitHub username. And then you need the passwords and that's the access token that we just created. So I'm just gonna paste it. It will not show you that one, but I just pasted it and the login succeeded. Now I can push that image to that. I need to use the name here. So I'm gonna copy the name. Let's see if that works. Yeah, so here I can just paste the name and I'm gonna press enter. All right, so it's gonna push it to GitHub. All right, so after a couple seconds, if you go to your packages here at the bottom, now I can see that this was pushed. All right, so now we want to get that image onto the VPS. So where do we get the VPS from? Well, in this video, I'm going to use Hostinger and they have a very big Black Friday sale as of recording. So you can see they have this KVM2 plan that I'm going to use in this video. I like using Hostinger. I've used it in other videos as well. I had a great time working with them so far. All right, very powerful servers. They've been around for a long time, but for now, I'm going to click on this one. And let me just quickly show you how I'm going to set the VPS up. And make sure to use the link in the description when you want to use the coupon code. So here here we are in the checkout page. So if you use the coupon code, you can also get a discount. So here we have a coupon code. It's actually gonna be ByteGrad in all uppercase. If you then apply this, we have an additional discount. All right, right after payments, I'm gonna go through the setup here. Let me just quickly show you how that works. So we can pick a location of that server essentially. And Hostinger is actually a Lithuanian company. So probably that's why they have it as the default here. I will actually go with that. That's perfectly fine. All right, so then we can set up an operating system and I will go with Ubuntu. I will not add anything else right now. And you need to add a password here. I will say next.js example like this. Of course, you want to keep it secret. I will delete this after recording. All right, I will click on continue here and then I'm going to finish the VPS setup. All right, so now it's going to provision the VPS for me. It's just going to take a minute or so. All right, so finally it's finished and you can see we get an IP address. That is essentially how we can access our server. If you go there right now, I mean, nothing will happen because we haven't added anything to our server. So we need to copy the IP address here. And I opened up the terminal app on my Mac. This is the same as just using the terminal in here. On Windows, you may use PowerShell or the command prompt CMD. So we need to get access to that server. We do that with SSH root add, and then it's the IP that you got here in the dashboard. So I'm gonna press enter here. So you may get some image about a fingerprint, yes. And then it needs to know the password. That's the password that we typed when we set up the VPS. So I just put that here and I'm gonna paste it here. It won't show you that, but that's what it did. All right, so then it will say, welcome to Ubuntu. So now I'm logged into my VPS. You can also see that this has changed. So then we're gonna run some Linux commands. So we can update to get the latest Ubuntu packages. Then we're gonna install Docker. Very similar to npm install. Here we're gonna do apt get, which is like a package manager for Linux. All right, it's gonna use some space. All right, so then to double check whether the Docker installation went correct, I can just query its version and you can see that this went all right. You can also try systemctl is active Docker to check and you can see it's active. And if it's not working, you may want to try systemctl start docker to really start or enable docker. All right, so we want to use docker here to get an image and then run that image. Run a so-called, the actual instance is called a container. Before we do it with our own image, docker also has one that we can just use to try. So if we say docker run hello world, it will pull that image onto this VPS. You can see it's not locally installed that image. So it's going to pull that image and then run it. So there was a hello world image and you can see here, we see hello from Docker. So this is a confirmation that, that is, all of that is working. So you can see if you run Docker images, we have that hello world image. We can run that in, as a container as it's called. Now we don't want to run that image. We want to run that image that we just pushed to GitHub. So to pull it from there, we need to log in to that registry again. The username is ByteGrad and the password is that access token. I just pasted it. All right, so then we're logged in. And then we can run a similar command. So we can say run. So we immediately want to run it. It will automatically pull the image. We can specify on which port as well. So it should be on, on the 
port 3000 of this VPS. And remember, Next.js by default also runs on port 3000. So it's going to map it like that. And then we need the name of that image. So if you go to your package here, you can get it uh, again like this. I actually show you that, but I'm just going to copy the... I can paste it right here and I'm going to press enter and let's see what happens. So it's, it will not find it locally, so it's going to pull it automatically from the registry. And you can see we get our familiar Next.js output right here logged. So now let's try it out. We're going to use this IP. If you go directly to it, you won't see it because it's running on port 3000. All right, and then we see our Next.js app. You may have to click on continue to site, by the way, if you get like a warning about SSL. If you click on continue and you try going there, you should be able to view it. And we don't have SSL yet, but we can set it up with hosting or no problem. But you can see here we have our Next.js app. Let's go to that cool page that has all of those Next.js features. You can see we see client, client component is working, the route handler is working, and even the server action is working here as well. So really cool. And with Docker, I would say this is the easiest way that I know of to self-host Next.js on a VPS. I would say it's mostly suitable for more experienced developers that have some experience with managing servers. And, and so if that's the case, definitely check out Hostinger's Black Friday promotion. Very affordable, very attractive prices here. And I had a great time working with them so far. So make sure to check out the link in the description and use the promo code BITEGRAD. So I want to thank Hostinger for sponsoring this video. And I want to thank you for watching. Hopefully it was helpful. Have a nice day. Bye.